Welcome to part four of the order management series. In this video, we're going to continue building the smart suite solution we started in part three. Specifically, we're going to look at the part stock, inventory items, and purchase orders. Check it out. Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Zach Stevenson. I'm a business process and no code consultant. If you need help streamlining or automating any of your business processes, you can visit our website, interdevsolutions.com or you can click the link in the description below to book a free consult. Continuing from part three, we're going to add to the order management system. In this video, we are going to specifically add the fields for the inventory items, part stock, purchase order, and purchase order items. A lot of what we're doing here is to teach concepts. And one concept that is very important, and I've touched on in other videos, are junction tables. Inventory items is a junction table between inventory or essentially products and the parts stock. Once we start adding fields, I'll explain a little bit more as to what I mean here. First thing, we're going to label this item ID and we'll come back in a moment and set it as an auto generated field. First field we're going to add is a link record field. We'll select the inventory and products table and we will turn off this allow linking to multiple records. Add the field. We're going to add the other linked record field. We will go in here and we'll select part stock. And again, we will turn off this allow linking to multiple records. And now we've created the junction between these two tables here of products and part stock. Now, what we can do, we're going to add a number field, number of parts required, and we'll set the precision to a whole number. And so we can add some sample data to this table. I'm going to go over to part stock and just add a sample record for now. And we'll just call it chair leg. We'll come back into here. We'll go item ID auto generated, and we can bring in the link to part stock field, and we will bring in the inventory products field. We can update this. Now we can go in here and add a new record. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into kitchen chair. This is going to be the product and one of the parts that get added to a kitchen chair. And again, we're going to keep this really simple. It's just a chair leg to display things properly or we'll right click and group by this field. There's going to be four legs that get added to it. So we can continue this. We'll flip back into part stock for a moment. We'll do chair seat and we'll also add in a chair back. Add two more records. We'll bring in the chair seat and there's one of those. And there's also going to be a chair back. And there's one of those for each given kitchen chair. We can now see that there's four chair legs, one seat and one back. And that is what builds out our entire product. The first helpful piece of this junction table of the inventory items, what we can do now, because we have some sample data added in here, bring in this quantity sold. So here we have four of this, these kitchen chairs sold. So we'll go into here. We'll add a new field it's going to be a formula field and the formula field. We can click the advanced editor and parts quantity used. And then from here, we're going to use a sum function. We're going to look at the inventory table. So we'll bring that in using the dot notation. We'll do the quantity sold. What we're doing here is we're taking a sum of this specific product, bringing in all of those items that have been sold, and we're going to multiply it by parts required. This is our total formula and function. We're going to use a sum function looking at the products table. We're going to sum up the total quantity sold of that specific product, and then we're going to multiply it by the number of parts that are required. And we can see here what it has done is we've now sold four chairs. We've brought it in here, multiplied it by four. We have now used 16 chair legs to build these products. We'll part stock. We already have our parts title. We can change the name to, of this. You simply call up parts name. We'll update the field. We can remove the comments field as well. We want to bring in the linked record we've already created our linked field that we've already created here. So this is the link to the inventory items. And this is another junction table. 
we'll bring in another linked record field. And this one, we will link to the purchase order items. And we'll add in the field here. What this table is doing is looking at the items used or sold from the inventory items table and the purchase order items. These are items that we have bought or purchased to bring and add into our stock. To add some sample data in, we're going to jump into the purchase order items table for a moment here. Click into the field to display and we'll do link to part stock. Again, we can remove the comments and the title we will set as auto generated and we're going to bring in the part stock and we can do maybe create a date for now. Don't forget to rename this. We can do this PO items ID and we'll update the field. What we're going to do here, we're going to add a new record. We're just going to select chair leg for now and we'll link the one part. We need to add a number field. This can be quantity and we'll leave the precision at one for whole numbers. Here we've now ordered, let's say 100 chair legs. This is what's coming into our stockpile now. Something that is useful to add in is a status field. And there's going to be a few things that we want to do. So maybe ordered and receive. And maybe one other thing that we want to add in as well is a pending. These are items that we're getting ready to order or that we've added to the purchase order, but not yet have submitted to our supplier. We'll just change the colors around on this quickly. Ordered can be in blue and we've got pending, which is going to be our default. But in this case, we can say that we have them ordered for this point in time. If we flip back to our stock, we can add an additional field here. Now, this is where we're going to look at all the items that we've sold and all of the items that we've ordered and received into our warehouse. We're going to use a roll up field and we're going to look at the PO items. We're going to look at the quantity and we're going to use the sum function. And I will look at this filter in a moment, but we'll add the field for now. And you can see that there has been 100 of these chair legs ordered. But the thing that's important to note here is this is part stock. So this is what we're actually looking at, what we have in stock. Because it's in the ordered status, we don't actually want to add that order to our stock until we've actually received it. If we go in here, rename this to quantity received. And if we scroll down to the filters, we can toggle this on and go down to the status is received. We'll update that. And you can see here, it will flip back to zero or it will be blank here in a moment. We go into purchase orders. Let's say we have received that item. We can click received. And in a moment, it will display here and show up that it's actually been added to our inventory now. We can duplicate this, label it quantity ordered, and we're going to change the filter of this one to order. So that way we can know if we are running low, but we've already placed an order, we can know how many we have being shipped to us. Add another roll-up field. This one can be quantity sold or quantity used, whatever you want to label it as. We'll do the link to inventory items. We'll do parts quantity used and it's going to be a sum function so we'll add that in and now we can compare what we have received so what we have had in stock and what we've sold now if we add in a formula field we can simply add the quantity received or take the quantity received and minus it by the quantity sold and this can just be quantity in a stock now that we have this information on the parts stock table we can flip back into the inventory items and we can actually look at how many sets that we have in stock now based on this number of parts required. Go in, add a formula field, and we'll label this sets in stock. And we are going to point to the part stock table, use the dot notation, and we're going to add the quantity in stock field. And then we're going to divide this by the number of parts required and we'll have to use a round function here in a moment but i'll just add this field for now and we can see that we have 21 sets in stock of the chair legs it's adding decimal places again you can leave it as is but because we're working the whole numbers we can use a round function here and that's just using round with a bracket and then at the end we're going to know how many decimal places we're using and in this case it's zero we can update this field. You can see that it's changed to a whole number. 
something else that's helpful. Add in some help text. I'm just going to paste this in here and I will update the field. Now there's a little icon here that's for additional information. If you click on it, you can see what this field actually means based on the description that we've added. To wrap things up, let's go back into the purchase order items. And from the purchase order items, we can add an additional linked record field. We're going to look at the purchase orders and we'll toggle this allow linking to multiple records off because only one line item or a line item can only link to one purchase order, but a purchase order can link to multiple line items. So we'll add in this field here, go over to purchase orders and we will finish up the information that we need at this level. Keep it really simple. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the comment. I'll bring in the auto number field and I will also add in a status. We can do pending, ordered, received, and we could do partial received. Another field that might be helpful is a date and this can just be for date ordered. Add that in and if I click into the auto number, I'm going to add a PO number ahead of that. Click update and we'll label this purchase order ID. Go to auto generated. First thing, bring in the auto number and I will add in the date ordered as well. Obviously to add to the purchase order, since we'll be sending this to suppliers, you could add some supplier details and information or add an additional table. Similar as we did to sales orders, where I mentioned that we could add a customer table and link the customer to the sales order. We could do the same thing on this end of things from the purchase orders. We could add a supplier table and add in the supplier information which probably does make most sense in this case. But for right now, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Last thing, I'm gonna add in some sample information here. We'll go date ordered. I'll make that today. I can flip this to ordered and I can link this purchase order item or line item to the purchase order. And I'll just quickly add in a couple of extra items that we've maybe ordered for this purchase order. To quickly demonstrate the other roll-up field that we added filtered by the quantity ordered, we can see here that the chair C, there's 50 pieces that have been ordered and it will show up here to show that there's been 50 of the chair seed ordered. These last two videos, part three and part four of the order management series looks after the general concepts of putting together an order management and inventory system. Obviously every company and organization is going to have their own unique practices and processes within the company. With that being said, this should give you a high level overview and at least point you in the right direction for creating a system to work within your business. That's it for part four of the order management system and series. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified of part five when it is released.